Sigma Tiger News, all up in your whole grill. The hot, juicy beef all day, almost every day. Elon versus the globalist, Aurora Criminalis, and Trump in the cemetery? <laughs> Boom, there it is, Labor Day, what's up? Everything's closed, so tune in. Musk ramps up attacks on Brazil's top judge as X faces possible suspension. Starlink finances frozen, sounds like a rogue judge here, let's have a look. Elon Musk railed against Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexandra de Moraes on Wednesday and Thursday after the court ordered X to appoint a legal representative in the country so they can arrest him. Demoraes and Musk have been locked in conflict over Brazil's social media regulations. Demoraes Court Globo News reported has fined X for alleged violations of Brazilian law and has frozen Starlink finances in the country to ensure those fines are paid. Interesting. Taking over a completely different entity to try and uh, get your money. A nice picture of Elon there. Tesla, SpaceX, and X Corp. Leader Elon Musk ramped up his online attacks on Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes on Thursday amid an intensifying political and legal battle between the tech billionaire and his companies and Brazil's highest court. Makes it sound like him, he's a criminal, right? What's he doing? Well, he's trying to allow people to use his platform and express themselves. And Brazil said no. What people are doing are saying things we don't like. And it's the opposite of what we've said. And people might believe it. So shut it down. Penalty of suspension of activities. Well. Boom. Judge orders X ban in Brazil. There it is. They've gone ahead and banned it. A judge in Brazil has ordered the suspension of X after owner Elon Musk failed to designate a new legal representative for the country, according to reports for Bloomberg and local news outlet Porter 360. Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexander de Moraes to, told the National Telecommunications Agency, Anatel, to limit access to X within 24 hours and has given Apple and Google five days to remove X from their mobile app stores. Wow. The country will also impose daily fines of 50,000 Brazilian real, 8,900 USD, to people who try to access through a virtual private network. A VPN. So you can download VPNs as apps on your phone and basically reroutes your IP address so you can circumvent any sort of blocks or bans that your country has implemented. People do it all the time. Try and remain private. Well, guess what? Privacy is totally unbecoming, you know. Anyway, censorship. Sorry, Elon. What's going on in Canada? Prime Minister unveils two Senate appointments for Alberta, including prominent liberal donor. Well, okay, it sounds like a conflict of interest. Career lawyer, the two-spirit, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, plus advocate appointed to the Red Chamber. Interesting, they called the Red Chamber, which is the color of the liberals. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has announced two Senate appointments for Alberta. In a news release on Saturday, Prime Minister's Office and Governor General Mary Simon has appointed Daryl Friedhandler and Christopher Wells to the Red Chamber, as the Senate is sometimes called. According to the biographies accompanying the announcement, Friedhandler is a corporate lawyer, arbitrator, mediator, and businessman with over 40 years of legal experience. Great. I'm gobsmacked. Excited, delighted, bursting. Friedhandler said in an interview with CBS News when asked how he felt about the appointment. I hope that I can be a bridge of good discourse between Alberta and the central government, an ambassador of the Senate to Alberta. Friedhandler was called to Alberta Bar in 1984. Said he hopes he can be ambassador. Friedhandler has been an active supporter of the federal Liberal Party since during his career story, serving as the party's election co-chair in Alberta in 2024-2009, according to his biography page and website, Canada Law, Burnett, Dugworth, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so what's the big deal? Who cares? Like, you know, the prime minister gets to appoint senators. Yeah, it happens. Every prime minister gets to do it. Well, guess what? Two hardcore liberals were appointed. Trudeau now controls 84 of the 105 and counting. So there's 105 in there. Trudeau appointed 84 of them in the past eight years. And they're all left-leaning. You can't 
repeal a law without the Senate. You can't pass a law either. Let that sink in. Daryl Friedhan, our longtime liberal supporter. Alberta separation now. Yeah. So anyway, basically, what happens? Doesn't matter if Trudeau's there or not. If the majority of the Senate are liberals, then the conservatives are going to have a very difficult time trying to axe the tax. Whatever. Anyway, good luck, Canada. Uh, shooting sore in one of North America's safest cities, the culprit, tow truck gangs, huh? What? A turf war has fueled a 50% rise in Toronto shootings, mostly with guns smuggled from the U.S. Wow. Rival gangs control parts of the tow truck industry here using the heavy-duty vehicles to transport drugs, extort car crash victims with high fees, and fake automobile accidents to defraud insurance. They once resolved their territorial differences with their fists, but now a wave of gun smuggling from the U.S. has turned their fights into a lethal blood sport. Good Lord, where's the police? I mean, like, is it that hard? You have a division of motor vehicles. Things need to be registered. You see a tow truck, just pull it over. Search it. It's not that hard. Like, you know, what's the evidence that 50% rise in tow truck gang shootings? So guess what? We're pulling you over. You are being profiled because 50% crimes are up. This year through late August, Toronto shootings are up 50% compared to the same period last year. And homicides are up 20%. A surge caused in part by the tow truck violence, said Inspector Paul Kwasix. Kwasix of Toronto Police Service Guns and Gangs Unit. In all, about one in seven Toronto shootings and discharges in firearms this year have been related to tow trucking industry. What the f is going on in Canada? Extortion is on the rise. They're crazy. Lock them up, Trudeau. Stop letting them out on bail. Violent drug gangs bring mayhem to Western Europe. Dutch cocaine kingpin sentenced to life in prison after deadly crime spree. Violence is destabilizing society. And of course, it's not that migrant crimes it's the drug crimes it's the big expensive stuff it's not the stabbings and the guttings on the buses and at the diversity festivals and you know sweden now has the highest gun homicide rate the military is helping police fight street gangs in denmark residents of the commune christiania shut their famed open air cannabis market after violent gangs took over belgium armed security forces have started guarding customs trucks carrying seized cocaine to prevent criminals from stealing it back yeah uh yeah and just one other thing in sweden uh, rapes are up 400 percent why check the stats other things are up migration illegal migration woman injures five and stabbing attack on german boss what is going on over there and why are they using knives it's the most intimate of killing it's the most horrific is it the most easily accessible it causes the most damage are these people completely like demonized to the point where they want to kill or maim five people have been injured three of them critical in uh, stabbing aboard a bus in western germany city of Siegen. 32 year old woman has been arrested another person suffered serious injuries at least 40 people were on the bus traveling to a city festival in Sijin, located 75 kilometers east of Cologne. I wonder what kind of festival it was, perhaps another diversity festival. Several passengers alerted the police and officers arrested the suspect. The motive of the crime remained initially unclear. Police said there was no indication of a terrorist attack. Germany's Bild tabloid reported that the attacker may have been suffering from mental health issues. Perhaps... The incident comes exactly one week after the fatal stabbing in the western German city of Solingen, where a knife-wielding attacker killed three people and injured eight. The suspected perpetrator, a 26-year-old Syrian citizen, is in custody. Yeah, and he was supposed to be deported last year, and he wasn't. And then guess what? Police in Sijin appealed to citizens not to spread false reports on social networks or other channels, and in particular, not to make any reference to a terrorist attack. Do not! Dare not! So was the person an illegal migrant? That's the question. Because that's all that matters. If it was, so what's the deal? Germany resumes Afghan deportations after mass stabbing. Hmm. Well, hush, hush, hush. Germany says it has carried out its first deportation of convicted Afghan offenders since the return of the Taliban to power in Afghanistan three years ago. The flight came a week after three people were fatally stabbed at a street festival in the western town of Solingen. The killings shocked Germany and sparked an intense debate over asylum rules when it emerged that the main suspect was 26-year-old Syrian refugee facing deportation. An Afghan man was detained after another deadly attack in May. 
The government in Berlin has already announced a series of measures ahead of elections on Sunday in eastern Germany where the far-right alternative for Germany is riding high in the polls and they destroyed the competition. And all the left, the extreme leftist, went out and started burning things. Anyway, asylum seekers facing deportation are to lose benefits and carrying knives will be banned at most public events. All public events shouldn't be allowed to carry a knife around. Because there's no training for knives. At least with a gun, you have to go learn how to shoot it and get a license to carry it. Concealed and carry license. Germany to harden weapons laws and asylum rules after solid and stabbing. Yeah, okay. Uh... Fractitious coalition government has announced a hard-fought compromise on changes to weapons law and asylum rules designed to prevent Islamist attacks such as last Friday's mass stabbing that left three people dead. Three days before the key state elections in which each of the ruling parties risk heavy losses to the far right, government minister said the knife rampage alleged, allegedly by a Syrian asylum seeker at the street festival in western city of Solgen had exposed critical weaknesses in the country's immigration and security policy. Yeah. The fact that there is no vetting process. There is no assimilation period. Come on in. Oh, you don't have any money? Hey, let's tax our citizens and give these guys money. They need help. What about the people that need help in your country? Why are you arresting people for posting on Facebook? I'm sure there's more to it people that have been arrested a lot of people are saying things look into it most of them are like you know they could charges could be trumped up whatever anyway she ain't made for this harris's aides white house staffers vilify her an expository book oh god a book written by progressives about progressives blasted kamala harris's at a time when political observers speculated whether she would be replaced as joe biden's vice president in it white house aides outlined harris's inability to define a political agenda and her total reliance on personality yeah, and she's lacking a lot of that. She, like, laughs, and everyone's like, ha-ha, she's so nice, ha-ha. She has no substance. As recently as summer 2023, a cavalcade of Democratic Party superstars like California Governor Gavin Newsom were brandishing their leadership credentials as calls grew for Biden to step aside. Once that time passed, the left-wing whisper machine turned on Harris in her historically abysmal favorability numbers. Enter the truce, progressives, centrists, and future of the Democratic Party, which dropped in January. That was just enough time for the left to replace Kamala Harris, and one would think supplied them with enough ammunition to do it. It was rotten from the start. A lot of us, at least folks that I was friends with on the campaign, all realized that, yeah, this person should not be president of the United States. These are people who worked with her. Her close allies. Well, let's just see what Kamala has to say for herself. Like, here's a little thing put together for you all. Go ahead and tune in and check it out. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. You know, we have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> you have people who are in, convicted in prison, like the Boston Marathon bomber, on death row, people who are convicted of sexual assault. They should be able to vote? I think we should have that conversation. Yes, what bye. What do you do about the millions of specifically assault weapons that are already in circulation what do you do about those well there are approximately five million to your point craig we have to have a buyback program and i support a mandatory buyback program it is outdated it is wrong-headed thinking to think that the only way you're going to get communities to be safe is to put more police officers on the street Paul also says quote every individual who is a resident of the united states is entitled to benefits for health care services under the sun not every individual is a citizen but every individual who's a resident mm -hmm. so you support giving universal health care medicare for all to people who are in this country illegally let me just be very clear about this i am opposed to any policy that would deny in our country any human being from access to public safety public education or public health period uh, to reiterate, you support uh, the Medicare for All bill, I think, initially right. co-sponsored co by Senator Bernie Sanders, who also co-sponsored yes. on it. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Um, so for people out there who like their insurance, well, they don't get to keep it. Let's eliminate all of that. Let's move on. How dare we speak Merry Christmas? How dare we? Ed, yeah, I am proud. Is my values not changed? Boom! 
like, it's true. Her values haven't changed. She is a monster. Absolutely. All right. Well, whatever. Moving right along. What the heck is this? Symbiosexuality is the new phenomenon that has forced experts to rethink human attraction. Huh? So we're talking about cuckolding? Is it, is it like the acceptance of like allowing your partner to be polyamorous? A new study has delved deeper into the polyamory and those who are partake in such relationships. The topic of polyamory and throuples received increased attention in recent months following the release of Zidania's new movie Challengers. Never heard of it. In the film, Zidania's character and two men have a very intense love triangle. But while in the movie, Josh O'Connor and Mike Face's character are both mainly attracted to Zania as she's driving peace in their relationship, there's a new sexual phenomenon that looks at these kind of relationships in a new light. This is something known as symbiosexuality, and it's where someone is attracted to an already established couple rather than them as individuals. This type of sexuality is described as attraction to the energy multidimensionality and power shared between people in a relationship. So this is literally like uh, making an excuse for your partner wanting to have intercourse with someone else and then your uh, cognitive dissonance to be like, oh, well, I, I, I love it. I love that my partner is, is finding love and happiness where they need it. But uh, yeah, I don't know about any of that. I don't know about any of that. That's crazy. That sounds like cuckolding. I mean, if my wife was like, hey, listen, I want to have an open relationship, I'd be like, you're open to get the f out of my house. How about that? See ya. Calling the lawyer. It's not cool. Couples. Not throuples. That's insane. That's never going to work. Mysokinesia phenomena may affect one in three people, research shows. Well, what the f is that? Noticing somebody fidgeting can be distracting. Vexing, which means annoying. Uh, even excruciating, but why? According to research, the stressful sensations caused by seeing others fidget are an incredibly common psychological phenomenon affecting as many as one in three people called mysokinesia, meaning hatred of movements. This strange phenomenon has been little studied by scientists until recent years, but was noted in the context of related conditions. Misophonia, a disorder where people become irritated upon hearing certain repetitious sounds. Well, I mean... What about a story being repeated over and over? Because I definitely get annoyed with that. You know what I mean? Like, especially if I've heard it three or four times, you know, in the following year. Not interested. What if it's like the same story in a couple days? Hey, I heard that story already. Yeah. Like you, that, that, when someone says, yeah, I know, I heard that, you know, like that's a cue to be like, you do not need to continue with all the details of your story. But being annoyed by the sounds people make, this just sounds like being a jerk. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, whatever. They're figuring it out. They're studying this new jerk phenomenon. How the migrant crisis drained $150 billion from taxpayers in a single year. Yeah, I would assume it's much more than that. But if you could think, they say, like, what, 7 million people came in? It's really more like 20, $150 billion to cover all those costs. Yeah, half of it was probably the bosses. Anyway, Massachusetts Republican leaders say there's one billion hole in the state's coffers, and they're accusing the Democrat-controlled government of quietly siphoning off tax dollars to deal with the migrant crisis. Absolutely. It's exactly what's happening. Where are they getting the money? From the tax coffers. The Healy Driscoll administration has shrouded nearly one billion spent in secrecy, leaving Massachusetts residents in the dark. Oh. In New York, the comptroller estimated the migrant crisis will cost state taxpayers $4.3 billion through 2025. Three billion this year alone. Anyway, yeah. Is it worth it? No. They're draining the system. And guess what? Aurora Criminalis, the police react to the alleged Venezuelan gang presence at apartments, have not taken over. Oh no 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 no. Don't get don't don't you dare say that. Aurora police shared an update after video service allegedly showing heavily armed Venezuelan migrant gang members trying to break into an apartment in Colorado. Yeah, we showed it on uh, Friday's episode. In the video from the news press conference posted on the department's official X account late Friday evening, Aurora Police Department Interim Chief Heather Morris said gang members have not taken over. I'm not saying that there's not gang members that don't live in this community, but what we are learning out here is that gang members have not taken over this complex, okay? Yeah, because they seen the cops outside and they all went inside and 
didn't answer the doors. Oh, we didn't see any. There's none with guns. So we were free to walk in and around. Clearly, it's not taken over. Rah, 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 rah. Anyway, well, let's see exactly what's going on here. How long did it take? Nigga, the Venezuelans is taking over. They just jacked them? Oh, me. These niggas is out here tripping. Bro, damn, they done made a mess of shit. This is the parking lot of Target. And these people are running wild, stealing cars, running stuff over, robbing people. Welcome to America, people. Colorado specifically. There you have it. What do you got to say? What do you got to say? The mayor of Aurora, Colorado confirms that Venezuelan gangsters have taken over several apartment buildings and have pushed out property managers to extort rent from the tenants directly. So he's opposing what the police are saying. What is he saying? Venezuelan gangs. Uh, we're, I'm trying to walk it back and do the, and do the, the investigation as to how the Vene so there's a concentration of Venezuelans uh, uh, in these, these three buildings. Uh, um, somebody put them there and somebody funded it. Uh, whether it's federal government or not, we're trying to find out who uh, these gangs apparently are, are attracted to where there's a concentration of, of uh, Venezuelan migrants. And so uh, they've, in fact, have kind of pushed out the property management through intimidation and then uh, collected the rents. Uh, uh, we have now, um, or have had, uh, it is ongoing uh, uh, operations uh, with uh, a, a task force, uh, local law enforcement, state uh, so the question is, is like, where's the rent money going? Like, who owns the building? Aren't they like, uh, we haven't received any checks this summer. Are you collecting rent? And they're like, sorry, sir, I was kicked out. And now we are taking over. Anyway, whatever. After falsely claiming the apartment building takeovers by migrants in the Denver area was a hoax, the Colorado governor has released a new statement. Colorado's zero-tolerance state for illegal activity taking over buildings has no place in Colorado, and I'm confident that the city of Aurora shares this basic value and will enforce the law if it is being violated there if, if, the police said it wasn't, so it's all case closed. I urge them to do so quickly and in a thorough manner. Over the last month, I've been in regular contact with the city of Aurora and the Aurora Police Department and have offered any and all state assistance to support their efforts if requested. If, 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 if. The state has been ready for weeks to back up any operation by Aurora Police Department needed to make Aurora safer. Governor Jared Polis, thank you so much for the reassurance, sir. And, uh, yeah, so... Here's the real story of how American Squatter Academic began. Like, that's basically what it all started with. They're showing up, just hanging out. Most people think of squatters' rights as a modern liberal experiment. The government has to get involved in every aspect of our lives, even deciding who has the right to live on our property. But as the Daily Caller's new documentary, American Squatter, shows, squatters' rights are about as old as America itself, and they once served as a noble purpose. Just like everything that once made America great, liberals have perverted them to their own nefarious ends. American squatter is available exclusively through patriots, blah, 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 whatever. There's a squatter epidemic taking place in cities across America with lax eviction laws and backlog court systems. Blue cities have empowered a whole cottage industry of housing crime. Professional squatters use fake leases to turn nice properties into trap houses, drug dens. Often, they turn to violence and keep the owners off their property. How'd we get here? Squatter's rights has been around for many, many years. It's kind of how the whole U.S. was settled. People would go out the West and they would take ownership of the land, but it wasn't meant to transfer ownership from people who really cared about their homes. Yeah, you know, it was all about taking the land from the indigenous. This is mine. I've mapped it out. I've put a fence. I've built a house and no one's allowed in. And the government that, uh, you know, the American government said that it's mine now. And then the Indians are like, oh, well, we have a treaty that that area is ours. And they're like, oh, not enforcing it. Well, there you go. So corruption 
all over the gaff. Well, guess what? Trump's in the cemetery, but he's not dead yet. U.S. Army rebukes Trump's campaign for incident at Arlington National Cemetery. Well, what could it be? I mean, he probably wanted to go there and um, pay tribute and respect to the Gold Star families, the, of the people who were lost in Afghanistan, right? Well, guess what? The incident was unfortunate, and is it unfortunate that the ANC employee and her professionalism has been unfairly attacked? ANC is a national shrine to the honor. Apparently, someone was like said, hey, listen, you can't be here, Trump. And they were like, excuse me, we can. And the person got all uppity and very upset and uh, decided not to press charges, considers the matter closed, because it is. And why? Well, guess what? The media has launched an Arlington Cemetery hoax against Trump campaign after Afghan, Afghan uh, uh, anniversary visit. A day after former President Donald Trump honored 13 fallen American service members at Arlington National Cemetery, NPR is claiming Trump campaign staff got into an altercation with a cemetery official who prevented them from taking photographs in an off-limits section. The outlet published an article claiming a source told the outlet that two members of Trump's campaign staff had a verbal and physical altercation with a cemetery official who allegedly attempted to prevent Trump campaign staff from entering Section 60 of the cemetery and filming and photographing in the section. Officials at the cemetery reportedly made clear that only cemetery staff members are authorized to take photographs or film. In response to the allegations, Trump campaign spokesperson Stephen Chung explained that a private photographer was permitted on the premises and added that an unnamed individual had decided to physically block members. There was no physical altercation, as described as we prepared to release footage if such defamatory claims are made. The fact is that a private photographer was permitted on the premises, and for whatever reason, an unnamed individual clearly suffering from a mental health episode decided to physically block members of President Trump's team during a very solemn ceremony. Okay, there we have it. We were granted access to have a photographer there. Only former President Trump may have an official photographer and or videographer outside the main media pool. If any other attendees, DVs, would like to bring media, they must arrive at 7 a.m. and be incorporated into the press pool. We recommend bringing additional media due... We recommend against bringing additional media due to limited space available in the press pool. Permitted. NPR is consistently full of shh. Yeah, absolutely. Just drivel. Uh, okay, well, before they tried to get in, Speaker of the House Mike Johnson had to intervene to get former President Donald Trump into Arlington National Cemetery for the third anniversary of Afghanistan's withdrawal with Gold Star families, a family told the Daily Caller. The Gold Star families, who lost their children to the Biden administration's withdrawal from Afghanistan, invited Trump to the Arlington National Cemetery. He laid a wreath there for 13 service members who were killed serving their country in Afghanistan. However, a Gold Star family member told the caller the Arlington National Cemetery was trying to make it difficult to appear in the cemetery to honor the children. Yeah, someone physically blocked it and was like, no, you can't come in here. Trump derangement syndrome. Like, this guy, I was told things about this man. Anyway, whatever. I want to thank the families. This is from the words of former President Donald Trump on his uh, Truth account. I want to thank the families of our great warriors who have been lost to us for the way they came together as one and thank me for attending at their request the celebration of their wonderful family members who because of the incompetence of kamala harris and joe biden she was in the situation room right to the bitter end of every choice that was made in afghanistan her words thank you for saying you wanted me to stand with you at arlington national ceremony and take pictures that it was your request not mine but it was my great honor to do so i will never forget lightweight VP Kamala Harris tried turning it around because they weren't there, have never spoken to the families, and have no intention to do so. In Afghanistan, you don't take the soldiers out first, you take the soldiers out last. This would be military 101, the most basic, and the leaders of that disaster should be immediately fired. We have fools in the White House, and now they are trying to solve the hostage crisis in Israel. Guess how that's going to turn out? Not so well, because guess what? They found six of them in the tunnels. And then Biden came out and said, uh, Netanyahu, you need to try harder to, to prevent this. Uh, 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 uh. You have nothing to say, Biden, you total fool. One interesting fact here, 30% uh, of Pennsylvania hunters are not registered to vote. 40% of Wisconsin hunters are not registered to vote. Donald Trump, if you're watching, do some podcasts about hunting. Get these people registered. Boeing Starliner crew are reporting hearing strange sonar-like noises emanating from the spacecraft. 
Crews on the International Space Station are trying to identify the source of strange noises reported by Boeing Starliner crew who contacted Mission Control saying, Houston, on two, we have a question about Starliner. We're hearing strange noises coming from the speaker, and we don't know what's causing it. The Starliner began emitting these strange sonar noises, and astronauts on the ISS are working to diagnose the issue, which occurred on Saturday since launched by Boeing on June 5th. The Starliner has faced several problems and significant challenges, temporarily stranding two astronauts due to safety concerns. Boeing Starliner is set to return September 6th with no crew on board. Boeing, totally the worst transportation company on Earth. And uh, that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in. Sigma Tiger signing out.